Throughout this video, there's going to be four main talking points that all help you drop a 20 bomb. Point number one is your landing. You need to land in the hottest spot on the map. If you're dropping a 20, it doesn't need to be consistent. You just need to get lucky one time or multiple times. So you need to land at the hottest spot and just hope you survive. Now, I chose Barometer as my spot because the dropship came in from the south heading north, and the Barometer is one of the biggest POIs on the south side of the map. If I had come in from a different spot, then I'd be landing somewhere else. But this was That's my right, spot. Chippy. You can see me looking around in the sky, counting how many teams are dropping on us. And if you guys really think about it, I'm going to pause here. Just think about this math problem, okay? Three stack of math three. Every team that you kill is one less team killing people in the match, okay? So if you can be that driving force right, at the beginning chippy. of the match that kills five squads or six squads... If you can be that team that does that, then your matches are going to be much longer and you are going to be the ones with all the kills at the end. Now since I'm on Gibraltar, all I have to do is land on any gun and then I get my arm shield up and I can bully whoever landed next to me. So I love landing in contested spots. Now in that squad wipe, I missed some mad easy shots and I hit some difficult shots. I just like to ask you guys to not worry about my aim this game. It's not even part of the video. It, it's just look, focus on my positioning, when I'm shooting, who I'm shooting, where I'm shooting. Don't worry about my aim. Now in this clip, you see me taking my time a little bit. You see me healing fully with four cells. You see me looting. I'm picking up a second gun. You should probably be moving a little bit faster than me in this clip. Uh, I hesitated because there was nobody shooting next to me, so I didn't know which way to go. But you should probably be moving a little bit faster than me. You don't even need to heal fully. You gotta be Johnny on the spot to drop a 20 bomb. Push this guy, push this guy. Check out this way. That's it, brother. If you heard me say push this way, push this way on the Bangalore there, that was because my teammate, Shifty, great guy, I'll be talking about him later, he called out that the other team was pushing us. And I didn't want to die, so I just decided to commit fully to pushing the first team that was only one person. I did not want to be stuck between them, because we might lose. Yep. Dude, nice name, Saint. That's an interesting uh, political opinion, but I respect it. Nice name, really bro. important combat tip here, guys. Notice how these two teams are fighting. I just pull up, then I kill one, and instead of just running in there and wedging myself between both teams, I back up, and now that one guy is down, I make sure that his team dies by wrapping around them and putting that, uh, keeping that team in the middle. I don't want to put myself in the middle. I already defused the situation. I want to kill that squad and then kill the other squad. Bro, caustic. Down one. I hit him. I actually hit that guy, bro. What the heck? There's no way. Now that shot right there brings me to my second talking point, which is gun choice. I personally think that it's important to run whatever guns you are most comfortable with. However, I would strongly suggest that you use guns that are good close range rather than long range. If you're an R301 crutch and that's the only gun you can use, that's fine. R301, it's got a good hip fire. I just want to stress that most of your fights are going to be super close. 
Um, and SMGs are kind of the king up close. If you really get the shotguns, that's cool too. It, honestly, it's not going to make or break a 20 bomb. It's just really helpful if you have good close range guns. I'm using a wingman because um, I can use it close range and it's really, really good when people are camping head glitches because I'm going to shoot them in the head and break them and then move up and then SMG everybody. That, that works for me. It might not work for you. Uh, just use guns that you're comfortable with in a close range setting. That's why the wingman's great. Because if you land on one, you have enough ammo to kill them all. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to pretend to be some genius, smart five head that can look at the map and be like, oh, yes, we should rotate this way for maximum kills. I don't know how to do any of that, bro. I'm just the guy that can shoot people. But I do look at the map to see um, where center zone is and try to formulate a nice little route on my way there where I'm traveling through the most um, contested spots. And this little, we call it like Jurassic Park or whatever. Um, this little area here with all the prowlers is super lively. So I'm sure there's going to be a squad or two there shooting each other. So I detour that way. Um, I think... I personally, um, if I'm, yeah, I personally do take each shot like it's an individual shot shot. I don't just full auto my wingman. Yeah. I don't know if that's why I hit the shots. It definitely helps, though, to be patient. But I think that's because I play Gibby. Like, I can be patient with my shots because I have extra health. Those guys on me. In that skirmish right there, I could have definitely killed all three guys um, if I was a little more brave, but I noticed that my teammate wasn't quite near me, and if I got downed, I probably would have been thirsted before he could help me, so I was just playing it safe. Um, there was some pretty good movement by me there because I got the Bangalore to like 15 health, and then I just split up the other two, so I was able to just make it a 1v1 and then a 1v1 again, and that's the, that's the key to winning a fight is not letting all three guys shoot at you. I'm sure that you guys have heard this from every streamer or YouTuber you've ever watched, but that's how you win. You just split them up so that it's a fair fight, a 1v1 every time. Oh. Oh, we got a fellow wingman enthusiast, okay. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna flank him. I really messed up in that fight. As you can see, my great teammate, who's a good friend of mine, Shifty F6, that's yeah. my dog. Um, he killed all three. I think he won magged all three, actually. I just simply wasn't aggressive enough in that fight. Um, him killing all three, that would never be a problem. Uh, like, whenever I play with somebody, I'm not there to have them feed me kills. They're not my servants. He can drop 15 and I'll have 15. That's a 30 bomb right there. I don't need all 30 kills for myself. That's fine. I simply should have been a lot more aggressive. I don't even think I used my bubble in that fight. I should have been up in there, bubble thrown. And I, I got one at least of those kills. At least one. Um, I played it too safe. I'm not sure why. I think uh, I just got nervous. Be in there like swimwear, guys. Repeat after me. In there like swimwear. To get a 20 bomb, okay? okay? Don't be afraid like I was in that fight. Enemy over there. My ult does not work here, unfortunately. Just gonna have to wingman their faces. Chat, if I hit one headshot, you guys gotta give me a kiss. Shields 
Pull out blow. I'm coming to bat. No, I, you killed him. All I gotta say about that is that I could have totally stolen that kill, and I did not because I'm trying to be a good friend. You do not have to let your friends have that kill. You can totally steal that, trust me. Now that is a tough angle. I don't have bubs, so pushing up here might kill me. Oh well, we do this. Let him push in the fight for more kills. Ooh, I'm landing in the hit, but he's shield. At the beginning of that fight, an Ash revealed our position, so we were going to do the smart thing and circle back to Cascade Falls and be like, hmm, where's the Ash? But I heard two teams fighting in Storm, so I said, I'm either going to pull up and get six kills, or I'm going to pull up and I'm going to get three weakened kills. And that's exactly what I did. I was in there like swimwear. At this point, I need six kills to drop a 20 bomb, and there's only three enemy squads left and I see two of them are fighting. I need to get in there, try to get all three kills on one team, maybe more if I can get there before they're done fighting each other. And that is talking point number three. It's diffusing the situation. You don't wanna get there after the fight. You wanna get there before they're killing each other. So I am just sprinting as fast as possible, trying to say, hey guys, I'm here. Focus on me, stop shooting each other. I'm gonna kill all six of you. Squad drop, recharging shield. Okay. Not far from the ring. Well, I have 17 kills. If there's Take three guys in. on this last squad. Hopefully, now that you saw the visual representation of what I was saying, it makes a little more sense. I simply pulled up, broke one guy in one team, broke one guy on the other team, and then wedged myself between. It really helps to do that entry damage and uh, deny them from pushing each other because. There's, that's two guys healing. So I got a little lucky, I guess you could say, but that was the plan going into it. If there's three, I gotta go for the 20. But if it's a solo, we just play on. And you actually just heard me do talking point number four. It's communicating with your team. That I only needed three kills, so if there's three guys left on the last team, uh, please let me have them. Uh, I would never do this if I wasn't like if it wasn't a guaranteed 20 bomb. I would never beg them for like a 19 bomb or, you know, hey, there's 12 enemies left and I need 12 for a 20 bomb. That's not a guarantee. Uh, just communicate with them, work it out from there. Don't beg them for kills. Don't ask them to feed you. Just let them know what your plan is, and then you can work together. One. 
my final bit of commentary here is that round three storm and beyond is lethal so if these guys had just died to storm which they might have um i wouldn't have got any of the kills but it does go to whoever shot them last the kill does so i was simply my plan going into this was shoot all of them at least once and then make sure shifty didn't shoot them that's why i'm telling him don't shoot the bloodhound don't shoot the bloodhound because i wanted the kill in case they died to storm just do damage to him Okay, don't shoot blood on. Don't shoot him, don't shoot him. Don't shield out. Give me my shield to reach out. Civilian and airstrike. Well, chat. Where were my dub with the 19s at? Prowler, Nox, and Thurston. No 20, 19. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You are the Apex champion. I did it for you, Love Sosa, because when that game started, he said 20 bomb this game. <laughs> that was such a random... Yeah, true. Thank you for helping me with those last uh, three.